the message after the tone. Yo, 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 one, four, eight, three to the three to the six to the nine, representing the ABQ. What up, biatch? Leave it at the tone. Chemistry is the study of matter, but I prefer to see it as the study of change. understood what I've just said to you. Yeah. Lung cancer. Inoperable. The DEA took all your money, your lab. You got nothing. Square one. But you know the business. And I know the chemistry. And normally I'd say someone did the world a favor. But our snitch is car. Turns out we find two grams of meth in it. Where'd you get this? I know you little punk ass didn't cook it. We take it to the lab. They come back, they tell us it is the purest they've ever seen. 99.1%. I mean, our chemist is blown away. He said he couldn't do the same thing better. Worse yet, it didn't come out of some super lab in Mexico. We're thinking this was cooked right here in the land of enchantment. The car was abandoned in what appears to be a uh, cook site. This is the uh, only other thing left behind. So be on notice. We got new players in town. are now mobilizing to being cooks on a much larger basis. No more simple Simon stuff. What started out as Walter enjoying calling out Hank's bluff in a poker game to have his way with authority is now escalating to him enjoying the thrills of committing illicit activity. This leads to him committing acts of having public sex with Skyler right after the duration of a PTA school meeting in the school parking lot. Even while having sex next to the same police cruiser featuring the same police officer who was speaking at the school board meeting about the dangers of crystal meth. Walter is testing the bridges to see how far he can test his limits of being born to be wild without getting caught. Even while failing to listen to Jesse a second time to just how dangerous Tuco's motives and intentions are. Walter still thinks he can make up for the loss of two pounds by doubling it to four pounds. The episode opens up to a place that has no name, but more of a place where shady deals are made that can turn an unfortunate fellow into a corpse. It's a deserted junkyard that is surrounded by towers and towers of rusting wrecked cars. The bad things about such a secluded spot is that one can pay a hefty price on their soul for such privacy where almost anything can happen. Walt thought he was being the smart one to choose such an abandoned place away from the eyes of the law, 
which is true to an extent. This is like a, a non-criminal's idea of a drug meet. On the other hand, even Tuco is confused as to why he was brought out there because even a tough guy like him is starting to feel a little bit queasy about what may or may not happen to him. Hey, what are we doing way the hell out here? What, they close the mall or something? Today's drug deals almost always happen in public for a lot of them fear being double-crossed and winding up in a ditch out by the highway. You have to hand it to Jesse because he doesn't get much credit for being a valuable source of information about the drug trade that Walter dismisses. Uh, how about Taco Cabeza? Half the deals I've ever done went down at Taco Cabeza. Nice and public, open 24 hours. Nobody ever gets shot at Taco Cabeza. Even after their violent encounter with Crazy Eight and Emilio, Walter still will not listen to reason that drug dealers can't be reasoned with, can't be bought. They like to give and take with force. That's it? That's all you got? Some production problems. Told me two pounds and now you waste my time with these chiclets? They were already ripped off once and what makes Walter think that Tuco, an insane ass clown of a dead eye killer, is not going to do the same thing. You're gonna argue? You got something to say? You doing business like a couple little bitches. Mr. White is about to learn soon enough, and it will be through the hard way. 52 and a half, 25 points big. Big. You have to give Jesse credit for not only taking a vicious beating by the hands of Tuco, but standing up tall and brave to back up his partner that shows that Jesse is not a stoned out loser. Interest weekly. Walter continues to roll the dice in quenching his thirst for grades with lots of empty promises that we know he cannot keep. Handle four pounds. Listen, old man, talk is talk. Owe me money? That's bad. He wants to live dangerously without realizing the consequences firsthand at what his decisions are going to land him and Jesse in. What did you just do? Walt launches into new schemes by pooling all of their money in renovating their RV and giving Jesse the dangerous talks on spending all of their money of finding and acquiring their new supplies. We're not going to need pseudoephedrine. We're gonna make phenylacetone in a tube furnace, then we're gonna use reductive amination to yield methamphetamine, four pounds. No pseudo. No pseudo. Yeah, Mr. White! Yes, yeah, science! Walt wants more, but still doesn't want to share in the risk of going the extra mile to fuel his drug enterprise like Jesse does. He's always looking for a fallout plan that will wipe his hands clean of any legal ramifications that may ensue. That is a shopping list. Uh, getting some of those items may be challenging. Auto transformer, six liters, and hyd hydrous methane. 40 grams thorium nitrate. Yo, Mr. White, I can't even pronounce half this shit. That's until Jesse hits a snag that he has done all of their risky work in acquiring their new supplies. All that is except but one. Methylamine, where's the methylamine? Not this crap I could just buy, right? But this methylamine, not so easy. Now Walt has no choice but to assist Jesse in the big risk operation by sneaking into bulk chemical supply warehouses and obtaining a single gallon drum of methylamine. They improvise quite badly in breaking and entering, looking more like the two stooges in arguing about the best way to move the methylamine barrel. Walt's not the only one in the family feeling the urge to break the law. During Skylar's baby shower, her sister Marie goes way over the top in acquiring a high-priced baby tiara she shoplifted from a high-end jewelry store. Oh. Mar Marie, is this um, white gold and several carats worth of zircons? Oh. Skylar tells this is too much. Not too much on this. You shouldn't have. You really, really shouldn't. 
but it's so, it's really, it's sparkly. Tyler tells her this is too much for a baby shower, but for Marie, it is all about grabbing the most attention and delivering the best gift of the day. From me, oh, and Hank. Oh. Honestly, Marie makes it more about her rather than Skylar and the baby. It even causes Skylar to lie her way out of legal trouble just to take the heat for her sister's shenanigans of stealing. Marie, it's Skylar. I just left Zachary's. I need to talk to you immediately. Later at the baby shower, Walter and Hank step out as they both get into a most interesting debate as to what is legal and what is not, as they both share a Cuban cigar. I was under the impression <clears throat> that these were illegal. Sometimes forbidden fruit tastes the sweetest. It's funny, isn't it? How we draw that line. You know, if we were drinking this in 1930, we'd be breaking the law. Who knows what will be legal next year? This is another example of Walter testing Hank's criminal mind and dropping hints to his secrets in public as he savors the moment as to his ambiguity in the drug trade. Well, you gotta visit lockup. You hear a lot of guys talking like that. The audience is treated to some more humor because since the RV is up for repairs, Jesse is forced to shit where he eats as he is forced to cook their new bath of meth in Jesse's basement during an open house. <gasps> Someone's in the yard. It's, this shows brilliant writing and perfect comic timing of the cast's performances that gives us a break from the grim and gore and more of that necessary release of laughter and light during the most funny oddball situations. Excuse me, I'd just like to see the basement. Yeah, well, it's occupied. It's not a bathroom. Hey! I just want to see the basement. What's the big deal? Wait, see the basement, bitch! You got that? Is that sinking in? Reality soon kicks in on the due date of the drug exchange back at the junkyard as they are staring face to face with the stone cold monster, Tuco. What is this shit? This is blue. We use a different chemical process, but it is every bit as pure. <laughs> oh, tight, 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 yeah! Oh, blue, yellow, pink! Whatever, man, just keep bringing me that. An unfortunate chance moment, slip of the tongue, misunderstanding turns into violence as Tuco explodes with such tenacity with horrific results. Just remember who you're working for. They don't already know that? Are you saying that they're stupid? Saying that I'm stupid? Wow! <laughs> 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 Damn, man, look at that! Look. Walt and Jesse are shocked in silence about this and unfortunately are in no power to do anything but just stand by and watch a fatal beatdown live and in progress. Whew! <sighs> That's messed up. The episode ends with just a blank, emotionless state on the face of Walter that he now understands who he just has gone to business with. It's not a businessman, but a madman. Walter has officially made a deal with the devil. Who's gonna save my soul now? Who's gonna save my soul now? Title reference, a no rough stuff type deal is derived from the Coen Brothers' 1996 film Fargo that has the same premise. In the film, a man sets up the kidnapping of his wife that goes horribly wrong. Like Walter, he has no idea of what type of violent drug world he has gotten himself into until it's too late. When Walter and Jesse plan on breaking into the chemical supply warehouse, they are going to need a powerful enough substance to break through this hefty lock. That's when Walter has Jesse collecting as many etch-a-sketches to collect all the powder contained within. 
Turns out, if you were to actually pry open an Etch-A-Sketch and remove the aluminum powder that coats the screen used to sketch your art out, you would have half the ingredients, the thermite. All that is needed now to give it that chemical reaction to eat through rust and lead is some form of iron oxide plus a heat source. Thermite is an explosive, but if it is combined with a high temperature around a small area, it can actually weld metal together without the aid of any conventional welding equipment. What opens the big iron lock at the chemical supply warehouse is Walt and Jesse using a gas torch as a heat source to start up the chemical reaction in order to boost a barrel of methylamine. Yes, folks, there was once a time where you could obtain a drug so awful for you that causes skin lesions, tooth decay, and loss, insomnia, hallucinations, paranoia, and all with the aid of a doctor's prescription. Once upon a time, meth was legal until the early 1980s. During World War II, meth was frequently distributed to those serving on the Allied and Axis powers that brought upon a staggering drug addiction amongst troops. The main reason for its distribution is the main side effect of meth is acute alertness. So millions of meth tablets were given to tank crews, aircraft personnel, and ground soldiers. After World War II, physicians would prescribe meth to treat narcolepsy, Parkinson's disease, depression, and alcoholism. Not exactly a step in the right direction. Yes, a form of meth is still prescribed today to treat attention deficit disorder and obesity. In order to halt the production and distribution of the drug on a large scale, laws were put into place in 1983 to prohibit the possession of equipment along with ingredients to make the drug. It wasn't until the Federal Combat Methamphetamine Epidemic Act of 2005 that many limits were placed on two of the drug's main ingredients, ephedrine and pseudoephedrine and other drugs containing those ingredients are now placed behind pharmacy counters requiring a prescription by a provider. Although these laws have cut down on domestic production of meth, meth making today still continues to run rampant due to increased demand for its harmful side effects.